Hi guys, it's Mrs. Gerhardt. I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to go over the Coral Reef Gizmo with you. You'll be working on it throughout this week. Um, so it's good that we get a, a solid foundation and that you know what's expected and what it is that you need to do. So as you can see, I have created a split screen. I have my Gizmo's guide on the left. I have opened it up in Notability. And then I have my Gizmo running from explorelearning.com on the right. If you are having any trouble accessing your Explore Learning um, login information or password, please reach out to either me or Mrs. Sweet via Canvas inbox and we can share that information with you. So the objectives um, of this gizmo, you are going to describe the feeding relationship between 10 important organisms in a simplified model of the Caribbean reef ecosystem. You are going to model the effects of changing ocean conditions on a Caribbean reef, including the increased storms, elevated temperatures, and decreased pH. And then you're also going to model the effects of land use on a Caribbean reef, including logging, emission of raw sewage, and agriculture. Um, so each one of those objectives is going to be covered in a different section of the gizmo. So you can see activity A, is where you are going to look over the um, feeding relationships. Activity B is where you are going to be looking at increased storms, increased temperature, and increased acidity. And activity C, you are going to be looking at the effects of logging, raw sewage, and agriculture on the reef. Now, why are we focusing so much on coral reefs? Well, Coral reefs are often considered to be the rainforests of the sea, and they are actually home to one quarter of all marine species. And as you saw from the racing extinction clips on Friday, we are putting our oceans in peril. And one of the places that we are seeing the effects of this most quickly are the coral reefs because they are a really fragile ecosystem, but also because we are so dependent upon them. So let's get started. We'll do a little bit of the um, warm up and whatnot together. Um, so the first thing we can do the prior knowledge questions. You don't have to do anything with the gizmo for these. So it says, look at the graph to the right. What does it show? Well, I can see that I have time along my X axis. It looks like from 1980, 1990, 2000, and 2010, and then I have percentages along my Y, and I can see a decrease. Um, so, and if I look up my, my title, it says percentage of coral cover in Caribbean reefs from 1977 to 2012. Well, based on that graph, unfortunately, I can tell then that the amount of coral that is in coral reefs is decreasing. So the amount of coral cover is decreasing. And it looks like it went from just over 50% to less than 10%. And that's really incredible. Um, and think back to the racing extinction clip where the National Geographic photographer did the first underwater panoramic um, in the Florida Keys. It was at the John Pennekamp State Park um, in Key Largo. And do you remember how when they came back like 20 years later or so, most of the coral looked dead? Well, that's the same thing that's happening here. And then it asks, why do you think that corals have declined since 1977? I'm gonna leave that one up to you. I want you to use your brain. Um, I want you to think, why have we seen such a decrease in the health of coral reefs in a very short amount of time? So go ahead and pause this video, write your answer in, and then come back. All right, so now let's take a look at the gizmo warm-up tells us that coral reefs are some of the most diverse habitats on Earth, home to over one quarter 
of all marine species, so that's 25%. The coral reefs gizmo provides a simplified model of interactions among 10 key species in Caribbean reefs. In the coral reefs one exploration, you will focus on the effects of the environmental factors. So these are kind of those natural things. So it tells us to advance the gizmo year 10 times. So we're looking for 10 years and it says to look carefully at the composition of the reef over time. Do we see any changes? So I'm going to advance the year. And advance again. And I'm looking to see if those same species that I started with are still showing up in my gizmo 10 years later. So I see my sea turtles, I see my parrotfish, I see my angelfish. I wouldn't say that I'm seeing any significant changes. Um, so let's put that in. No significant. And then delta means change. Oh, there's my grouper. Yeah, nope, no significant changes. So then it says to select the data tab. Check that staghorn coral, star coral, sponges, and algae are all selected. Populations are given as percentage of normal populations. What do we see? So I'm going to come up here and click data. We have staghorn, we need star coral, and we need algae. So I'm going to remove what I don't need. And this is showing me in three different colors. that everything is the way it's supposed to be. So when I zoom in, I am able to see my staghorn coral in red, my boulder star coil, uh, coral excuse me, in gray, and my algae in green. And they're all at 100. So they are where they are supposed to be. So this means that the populations are relatively stable. And then I'm told on the right side of the gizmo, select the summary tab. In a healthy reef, what are the values for nutrient load, water clarity, and coral cover, and the total number of fish species? So I'm gonna come up to the summary tab and nutrient load is 4 PPT, which is parts per thousand. Water clarity is 94%, so that just that's dealing with also turbidity, if you will. It's how much stuff is in it, can you see through it. Coral cover, so I should have about 49% of my reef covered in coral. And my total number of fish species is about 442. So that is for a healthy reef. Now what you are going to do in activity A is look at those connections and how these species are all dependent upon one another um, and create the big food chain. I'm gonna bring your attention to this word down here number two um, that I'm highlighting, that is zooxanthellae. Um, and those are the algae that actually live inside the coral. So you may have heard that coral is a symbiotic relationship with an animal, the coral, and an algae, and the algae is actually called zooxanthellae. In activity B, um, you are going to be looking at those things that are changing in coral reefs due to the indirect hand of man. So think back to those racing extinction clips from last week and think about the indirect hand of man for activity B. And then for activity C, you are looking at the direct hand of man. How are we directly affecting the reef? As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please be sure to reach out to me or Miss Sweet via Canvas inbox, as well as if you're having any trouble getting logged on to the Gizmos website. Um, if you want to stop by for office hours, please be sure to check the weekly agenda for those. 
All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Have a great rest of your day. Be good, be safe, be kind.